Thank you, Danielle. And thank you very much for inviting me to this excellent Ketotic Hypoglycemia International First Conference. It is an honor to be here and be part of all of you. So my talk is regarding eating aversions and nutrition in children with a ketotic hypoglycemia. I have no conflict of interest. In the past, I worked with VitaFlow on the GLIDE study and worked with Ultragenics on gene therapy study. My objectives is for everyone to understand eating aversions for the ketotic hypoglycemic child and to understand what fuels the body and to learn protein choices for ketotic hypoglycemia. I was very lucky, Danielle was kind enough to send an email out to the parents to see what type of questions they have. And I wanted to make sure that I addressed the majority of the questions regarding eating aversions and nutrition. So I'm gonna start with eating aversions first. There is one thing I look at, and it's very important for all parents to know that there's several fuels for the body. One is of course, your protein, carbs, and fat. And with the protein, I always ask a child to stick their tongue out and see if they can move it left to right and move food around inside the mouth. So the tongue being a muscle, I really look at that first. So I have them stick their tongue out, move it left to the right. And then what I do is I look to see and watch your child chew a piece of food. Is your child chewing food in front, side, or in back of the mouth? Positioning the food is very important in the mouth. Creating more saliva in the mouth, moving the amylase, which is the saliva, breaks down the food and it makes it easier. So if a child puts food in their mouth and they chew front, all they're doing is chopping the food. It's not mashed. So all they will do is chew with the front teeth. You have big chunks and they swallow. The other thing too is pocketing food in the side of the mouth, which a lot of children do. Give small bites, one bite at a time, especially if there is a feeding aversion because they'll just keep holding it in the mouth. Give a drink with the food. Texture can make a difference. Many times they have sensory and texture issues. So many times I have seen children, food touching their mouth, they start gagging. So we need to break that habit. Also, we recommend an occupational therapist or a speech therapy person, because they are the experts. But I will ask, and I will show you the different things that you can do for the sensory piece, which is a toothbrush and a straw. So the three fuels for the body from macronutrients are carbohydrates, protein, and fat. So this picture here shows your noodles, it shows seeds, it shows bread, and you see fruit. The fruit is an, a question that I had from the parents. We recommend berries, strawberries, blackberries. They are the least amount of fructose. Also passion fruit is another one that's very low. I had one parent ask me how much fruit is too much because they notice when they eat a lot of carbs with fruit, about an hour, hour and a half later, the child crashes. Well, we do regulate the fructose. The fruit turns into fructose in the liver, which turns into sugar, which with the carbs, and it just makes them have a reaction. So one of the main questions several times in the questionnaire was, how many carbs, what's too many, how much snack can they have? So as a start, we start with 10 to 15 grams of carbs for meals plus protein. For snacks, we say five grams of carbs plus protein. Sugars was another question, how much sugar can they have? We limit it to five grams per meal and 2.5 grams for the snacks. So protein is another fuel for the body. And as you can see, there's a lot of choices. I was asked about gluten-free diet. You can definitely eat 
doesn't matter if you're gluten free or not. If you're a vegetarian, it doesn't matter. There are different things that your health team can uh, work out with you. I was asked about snacks. Here's a easy snack for higher protein foods. And as you can see, again, you have to read the labels. That is the key. And this one has 16 grams of carbs and 15 grams of, of protein. Cheese is a very good one. I just had a phone call this morning and the hospital where their child was staying was not allowing them to have any kind of cheese because it's dairy. They can have dairy. The sugar in uh, the milks is actually very good for them because it has the protein and they need the protein. In cheese, the galactose is processed out. So in this one, you will see in one serving, it has seven grams of protein and look how little carbs. The sugar is included in total carbs. So it's less than one gram. That's something they could eat. Here's something else, beef jerky read the label. You have one that doesn't have any or very little carbs. The other one has carbs. One has more protein than the other. Compare them. Fats. I was asked about what are good fats and what are bad fats. And here I listed them for you. And the monosaturated and the polyunsaturated fats are your healthier fats. And it is walnuts, sunflower seeds, avocado, olive oil. So hopefully do not stop fats. You need fats to absorb vitamin A, D, E, and K. And the recommendation, cornstarch is the most important piece for the carbohydrate because it is a very slow acting carb. It's a slow complex carb. What we have found is that when you give them Masena or Argo at night, a lot, of, a lot of our ketotic hypoglycemic children last and they don't wake up. They don't have sweats. They don't wake up cranky. And how much cornstarch is the recommendation? Again, check with your medical team, but we start at one gram per kilogram per day. At night is when usually your children will grow, the first four hours usually. So we give them possibly sometimes 1.5 grams of kilograms of cornstarch at night. Again, it depends on your medical team and it also depends on what your child's numbers are. That's very important. Protein, two to three grams per kilo per day. Many times you can't have a child eat all that meat. So we supplement. And we do the Unjury is one brand, Sun Warrior is another. There is so much out there, but I do ask for you to read the label. Glycosate is an extend release cornstarch, which actually most of our ketotic hypoglycemic children did extremely well. What we found is that if we give them the glycosate, they don't need quite as many cornstarch doses. How do you measure cornstarch and protein? Well, majority of the time in the old guidelines, it was always tablespoons. Well, we've always experimented with our patients. So they would say, okay, my child takes four tablespoons of cornstarch and it's supposed to be 30 grams of cornstarch. So we have them do weigh out the amount and many times it's either way under or way over. So that's over treatment which means the liver is working extra. So we recommend to weigh out by grams, and this is a gram scale, just an example. The protein powders and the cornstarch powders are very important to weigh on a gram scale. Now, if someone says he is to eat 15 grams of carbs, be very careful, it doesn't mean it's 15 grams of weight. Same thing with protein. If you read the labels on the protein powders, it's going to say one scoop is 21 grams of protein, but in weight, it might be 30. So be very careful. Many people get that confused. I was also asked, what do I mix the cornstarch or the protein for my children? Because they don't want it just plain. So the protein and the cornstarch can actually be mixed together if that's easier. 
It could be mixed in water. It could be mixed in crystallite in different milks that are lower in sugar. They can be also mixed with the regular milk because the ketotic hypoglycemic children can actually have the sugar in the milk. Another favorite one for many of our patients is diet Kool-Aid. So again, I make it fun for children. I do everything starting very small and then I work my way up. So many children have sensory and texture issues. As the child is little, give them something like a toothbrush. Let them chew on it in the front, in the back. And so this way they get used to something prickling them, like if something crunchy. And also it's uh, not just the smooth textures that they're doing. So also another trick I learned was you get a straw. If they're gonna drink, watch if they drink and they just put it in their front of their teeth that's not good. You never, they'll take them forever to drink anything. But if you open, have them open their mouth, put the straw on the tongue, close the mouth and sip up, you'll notice that they'll drink much faster. And I'm sure the dentists will be happy also. Make sure they swish water always after cornstarch or protein. I did forget to mention that earlier. Another straw trick I learned is get a straw, Get, I like to use cheese because a lot of the children like cheese. I do funny little type of uh, designs and the cheese is inside the straw. Now it's very little and tiny. I have them bite in the back. You notice I'm not putting the straw in the front. I'm putting it on the side, press down with the teeth and the food stays in the back of the mouth and they feel it. Do it a couple of times without anything in it so it doesn't shock them and then do the cheese and you will see you'll start getting better results. Rebound hypoglycemia occurs when someone is on a continuous feed and it's shut off immediately. What we recommend to prevent the rebound or low blood sugar is to give the child the cornstarch protein food a half hour before you shut off the continuous feeds that you're not gonna see any rebound hypoglycemia. I like to thank Danielle and everyone and Dr. Weinstein for recommending me for this talk. I really enjoyed it and please, I have my email and my phone number. If anyone needs help, please contact their dietitians or their medical team. I would love to help them. Thank you so much. We have just learned an educational uh, presentation from Kathy Ross about eating aversions. And we now welcome Kathy Ross in a live Q&A. Hi, Kathy. Hello, Danielle. Thank you again for having me. I am so honored to have you here. And I have a lot of questions from from the family, so I will just get on with it. The first question. So this is from a family in the UK. My child has been diagnosed with ARFID and sensory issues around food. I know there are multiple families in the KHI support group who also have an ARFID diagnosis of very extreme issues with food. Why do you think this is so common in children with IKH? There are quite a few children that have the sensory and texture issues. And many times they haven't been introduced to certain textures. When they don't feel well, and if they're not under good metabolic control, they are not going to want to eat. So when you try new foods or any new type of uh, procedures with the mouth or whatever, make sure that their blood sugars and their ketones are within the normal range. You'll see better results. Thank you so much, Kathy. And I have a lot of more. <laughs> so my doctor haven't told us to give corn starch before bed and we are still seeing low blood sugars in the morning. What type of snacks do you recommend specifically before bed to help them get through the night. So if they're not on cornstarch, I would highly recommend to have a nice complex carb 
type of cereal with low sugar and also check the blood sugar in the middle of the night and in the morning. Also, when you have good results or you write everything down, take it to your doctors and show them what their numbers are. But definitely some type of complex. And also you could introduce the protein with it because the protein will prevent you from going sky high and dropping real fast. Protein actually, here's your blood sugar and you blood sugar goes up. And if you do the just carbohydrates, you'll see it come down very rapidly. But if you do carb with a protein, here is your blood sugar and all of a sudden it slows down. Again, everyone's different. Cover that with your individual team, medical team. Thank you so much, Kathy. And now I have a question from Paul. He is asking if he can have his KH daughter on a vegan diet or if that would be harmful for her cathartic hypoglycemia? Well, first I would want to see also her labs um, and I would want to see what her prealbumin is. Usually you can do a vegan diet. It is very safe, but you need to make sure that they're getting all the nutrients as well. I we always recommend a multivitamin for all our patients and also to see what their blood work has done. Thank you, Kathy. And I will just move on. I think we have a little bit time. So this is from Kate. What is the best type of diet for IKH kids? Again, everyone is so individualized with the IKH. I would always say, speak with your medical team and if you have a dietitian, also see what their parameters are. Our parameters start with 10 to 15 grams of carbs, two to three grams of uh, protein per kilo. So again, it's very individualized. I've seen some children not react at all when they have one strawberry. I've seen other children with one strawberry go very high. So it is again, very individualized. Thank you, Kathy. And then I have a question from Valerie. She's asking, can tapioca starch be used in place of cornstarch? Absolutely. Uh, there are quite a few different starches that can be used, as well as arrowroot. Um, we've actually used matzah meal in Israel. And uh, tapioca is usually our next choice if they do not do well in, with cornstarch. The difference is that the carbohydrate ratio is a little different, so it should be adjusted accordingly. Thank you so much. And I'm just keep going because they are spamming me with questions. So I have a question from Heather. She's asking, does processed food containing cornstarch work the same way as cornstarch mixed with something? So processed food with cornstarch, again, it's very individualized. I have seen some children, it has lasted them a little bit longer, but again, and we have not touched about glycemic index, glycemic index affects everyone very different. So that's why I don't, counsel with glycemic index, but you need to know what your child reacts to the best. So whatever that processed food is, I would watch what her blood sugar is and see how she does. Again, it's very individualized. Thank you, Kathy. And I think we can just get one more question. This is from Becky. My daughter was on a GF diet with minimal issues. Her consultant insisted she was put back onto gluten as this would cause her to drop. Is this the case? Again, that's a medical question that's very individualized. Everyone's different. I've seen several children do much better on gluten-free diets and others do better with gluten. And you need to see what how their labs and also if there's an allergy or sensitivity, that's extremely important. Thank you so much for being here, Kathy. I really appreciate it. And I have a lot of more questions for you as I will pass on to you after the conference.